Sa pong pinagpalang linggo sa ating lahat, maligayang GC, MGCQ na tayo ngayon. So, hindi ibig sabihin ay uh, pwede na tayong lumabas at magpunta kung saan-saan. Ito po ay uh, maganda pagkakataan para yung ibang mga negosyo magsimula na. Pero sa atin bilang church, tuloy pa rin tayo sa online streaming natin. And patuloy lang natin ipanalangin, patuloy yung pagwala na itong virus na to at uh, makahanap na talaga ng vaccine. Pero ganun pa man, tayo yung nagpapasalamat dahil sama-sama tayong sumasamba sa Panginoon ngayong araw na to, ngayong araw na linggo. Kaya nyo pong ibahagi ko po sa inyo itong uh, talata sa Biblia sa, uh, sa Book of Isaiah chapter 40. Sabi ng Book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28, Do you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never grows pain or weary. There is no limit to His understanding. He gives strength to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Youth may faint and grow weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They walk. They will walk and not faint. Ang ganda po ng pangako ng salita ng Panginoon sa atin ngayong umaga. Kung tayo man po ay nangangailangan ng lakas, hindi lang to physical strength. Pero yung tinuturo ng Panginoon dito, yung kalakasan na hindi ka lang palalakasin sa physical, kundi magagawa mo pa yung kailangan mong gawin bilang anak niya. Ito yung patungkol sa pag-progress natin, patungkol sa pagbibigay niya sa iyo ng kakayahan para magampanan natin yung purpose natin. And this morning, I pray, lahat tayo sa pagpatuloy nating pagsamba at pagpupuri sa Panginoon, maging sa patuloy nating pagbubulay ng salita niya, pahintulutan natin yung presensya niya, yung salita niya na magbago sa atin. Samahan niyo po kami as we worship. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, dahil pagkakataon muli namin na lumapit sa iyo at kilalani namin kung sino kami, na wala kaming magagawa kung wala ka. Ang kalakasang physical at spiritual ay nanggagaling sa inyo. So lumalapit kami, nagpapasalamat sa biyaya, sa bag na aming natanggap. Salamat sa provision mo. Salamat sa patuloy niyong pag-iingat sa amin sa mga members po namin. Maraming maraming salamat din, Panginoon, dahil pagkakataon na makapagbigay ng pasasalamat, makapaglingkod sa iyo ngayong araw na to. Kayo po ang aming itinataas sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Handa na po ba kayo? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's sing this song. Come on, sing. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Come on, our hope, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the Everlasting God, the everlasting God. Cause you do not fail, you won't grow weary. Your love defender of the weak, you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like. Eager. Our church strength will rise. The strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. The strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign for Come on, our hope, our hope, our strong deliverer, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting, everlasting God, everlasting God. You do not fail, you won't go away. You're the defender of the weak. Comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Come 
Come on, let's declare you are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. The everlasting God. The everlasting. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. Cause you do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting, everlasting God, the everlasting God. Because you do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Purihin ang Panginoon. Church, it's treasure that I hold. This treasure that I hold more than finest gold. It is you, Jesus. heart with all my soul with all my heart with all my soul I live to worship you and praise forevermore praise forevermore Sing this treasure that I hold, this treasure that I hold more than finest gold. It is you, yes, Lord Jesus. It is you with all my heart. With all my heart, with all my soul, I live to worship you and praise forevermore. We praise your name, praise forevermore, Lord. Wings 
voice of heaven I will soar with you You take my brokenness. You alone are Lord, 
and everything of me yes lord you sit for your glory that everyone will see will hear will know i want to live lord i want to live for you be glorified forever and my life will declare that you alone are lord is everything of me you sit for your glory that everyone will see will hear will know that you are lord of all yes lord kaya mo patuloy na makita na mga tao sa labas Panginoon na hindi pa nakakilala sa iyo sa paraan ng aming patuloy na pagpapasakop sa iyo kung sino ka kung ano ka Panginoon sa buhay namin dahil lang layunin mo ay nagaganap dahil patuloy kami nagpapamold sa iyo nagpapagamit sa iyo at patuloy Lord para sa kalulatian mo Lord as we sing this prayerfully come on church cause here I am Lord use me here I am Lord use me Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, use me. And here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, for me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. I want to live for you. Be glorified forever. My life will be clear. That you alone are Lord is everything of me, yes, Lord. You sit for your glory that everyone will see, will hear, will know. Come on, I want to live for you. I want to live for you. Be glorified forever. My life will declare. That you alone are Lord, yes, Lord. Everything of me, you sit for your glory. That everyone will see, will hear, will know. That everyone will see, will hear, will know. That everyone will see. Will hear, will know that you are Lord of all. Yes, Lord, yung pong aming dalangin, Panginoon, patuloy sa buhay na ito, na hindi lang namin sinasabi, hindi lang namin dinideclare, kundi araw-araw kinikilala namin na kayo po ang Diyos na patuloy na magmumold sa amin, patuloy na gagamit sa amin, patuloy, Lord, para sa kalulatian mo, Panginoon sa pamamagitan lamang na pahintulutan namin ang iyong salita na mag-transform sa amin, Panginoon, ang iyong salita at iyong presensya at paghintulot namin sa pagkilos mo sa aming buhay. Maraming maraming salamat po. Purihin po ang iyong pangalan, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Ito po si Pastor James Leitigan ng International Bible Church here in Mandaluyong and still we are in uh, GCQ and we want to thank you for joining us this morning Salamat po sa inyong pagdalo We appreciate uh, the last several months that you've joined us We hope that uh, this whole entire thing is uh, uh, allowing you to be able to determine you know, exactly what God wants you to do and wants you to experience and most of all that it will be a growing time for you as I believe it is God's will Para po sa gawain ng Panginoon, para po sa church, that this should also be a growing time for the church. And so I pray today that you would take this time, uh, before we even begin anything, that you would take this time to ask God, Lord, 
Ano pong ginagawa mo sa buhay ko? What are you trying to do in my life? What is it that you want to accomplish in my life today? Okay? I, I believe that as I, we went into this uh, series, you know, uh, two messages ago, na the Christian life is a life that is constantly moving into becoming what God desires for us to be. Okay, yung series natin ng transformation. And we embark on that series starting uh, from an incredible book or teaching in the book of Luke, uh, tracking by Dr. Luke, no, ang sumulat po nito. And uh, we'll find in the study of Luke, he begins to indicate what Jesus was saying after investigating po lahat ng buhay ng Panginoon. Luke was not yet a follower of Christ during the time of Jesus, no? And so he was so intrigued in such a way that he began to document and write and investigate fully ano bang meron? Who is the Jesus that I'm following? And what does he have for me? And so he began to transcribe and write down everything that he knows. And that's why we have the book of Luke as part of the four Gospels. And in this teaching, he began to relate to us an, an event in the time of Jesus, at the time that Jesus was in the thick of his ministry, uh, he was feeding the, you know, uh, miraculously, he was turning the water into wine, you know, in a miracle. Um, he was healing the sick, he was raising the dead. I mean, it was just an incredible, you know, a display of power in Jesus. And people would follow him, literally thousands would follow him, just because, you know, just because. Kasi masarap sundan, you know. Sikat, sikat. And in, in that time that Jesus was teaching, He began to relate to us, what, you know, what are you trying to say? Sabi ng mga tao. And Jesus began to give us a parable. We learned a few weeks ago, na pag sinabing parable, it is a biblical story, a story with a biblical meaning. Now, sometimes, ang parable or ang parabola is an actual story, an actual event, or a story, pero both have a biblical intention or biblical interpretation or application. Wala pong hidden something. There's no magic, no? And so, Jesus would use parables para po mas maintindihan ng mga tao what He was trying to convey to them. Okay? Now, Pastor, what does that have to do with transformation? We learned a few weeks ago, sinabi natin transformation, that in 1 Corinthians, Apostle Paul writes, sabi, So neither the one who plants, nor the one who waters is anything. Ano ba yan? Nagpa-plant, water But only God who makes things grow. You see, pag pinag-usapan natin ang boy Kristiyano, our heart is our most valuable possession. Totoo po yan. Okay, not necessarily the physical heart, although that's important. Pero pag pinag-usap natin yung heart, our soul, our mind, our being, we guard it very closely. No? Itong generation ito, nauso yung fake news. Ang daming fake news. Daming umikat na fake news. No? Uh, ang hirap tuloy mapaniwalaan kung ano ba yung totoo o hindi. No? Baka may mag-email sa inyo na isang prinsipe galing sa Africa. Na may, meron siyang million-million na pera o gold bars na kailangan niyang ilabas. Kailangan lang niyang magbigay ka ng konting pera para pambayad, para mo whatever, whatever, bili ka naman. No? O may nakakuha ka ng text na kalagay, you won! You know? Pero para mailipat sa banko mo, bigay mo yung bank details mo, bibi ikaw na kumagat ka naman kasi daming fake news. No? Daming fake news. And, and it's so hard to to get a grasp. And so because of that, natututuloy tayo na, you know, to guard our hearts. Naging skeptic tayo. Naging skeptic. Ma- pala duda tayo sa lahat ng bagay. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, not to take, sabi nga ng mundo, take everything with a grain of salt. Asnan mo para hindi ka malin lang. I understand that's true. But sometimes, oftentimes, lalo na pagkay transcounter dun sa gusto nating gawin against dun sa gusto nating ma-accomplish against dun sa desire natin pag bumangga ito with the Word of God with what God is trying to say nagsa-struggle tayo 
Kasi naisip na natin, na plano na natin, na una natin, isip natin, utak natin, naka-form around the general idea and we think we've already got it down. And so we get into the Word and suddenly the Word says or wise counsel says opposite of what we want to accomplish. Hindi natin matanggap. Hindi matanggap. Kasi hindi natin maisip. Nang bila, inisip ko na, pinag-aralan ko na, tapos hindi pa rin totoo. It runs counter, so we shield our hearts. And so we guard our hearts. Kaya hindi tuloy natin ito ma-accept or maintindihan. In doing so, our hearts become hard. In the same story, we find Jesus. And Jesus began to take these people and He began to teach them. And in order for them to teach them, gumawa ng parabolic teaching si Jesus para ipaliwanag yung kaisipan at puso ng apat na klaseng tao na nakikinig sa Kanya. He begin to, began to outline in this story the four kinds of hearts, four kinds of people that follow Him. And this is what He said. On that day, Jesus told a story. No? He told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear Him. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across his field, some fell on the footpath, where it began to be stepped on. The birds ate it. Other seed fell among the rocks. No? And it began to grow. And the plant soon wilted. And it died because it did not have moisture. Verse 7. Other seed fell among the thorns, and it grew up, but it was choked, sinakal, among the thorns, and nawala den. Verse 8. Other seed fell on fertile soil. Matabang lupa. This grew a hundred times as much as has been planted. And when he said this, he called that anyone with ears should listen and understand. Let's look at a different rendering of, of the scripture that we will find here today. Okay? Sa rendering ng po ito, sa Matthew. Ito na masinabi. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed fell on the footpath. It represents, so may interpretation na tayo. It represents those who hear the message about the kingdom of God, but they don't understand it. And then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear, no? who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, bababa, ugat, they don't last long and they fall away. And soon, wala na rin. No? Wala na. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but too quickly the message is crowded. They eat it by worries of this life and the lure of wealth, and so no fruit is produced. Verse 23, the seed that fell on good soil, yung magandang soil, magandang lupa, represents those who truly hear and understand the word of God and produce the harvest of 30, 60, even a hundred times much more that had been. You see, pag pinag-usapan po natin ang growth and transformation, pag pinag-usapan natin yan, what we're saying here is this, a new creation requires real transformation. Ang bagong nilalang ay nakangailangan ng pagbabago din sa ating buhay. Okay? Otherwise, you may just be following religion. Kasi ang religion po madali eh. No? Mabil, ang religion, kasi ang religion, mabilis yan. Okay, sumapi ka na. Ito na gawin mo. Boom, boom, boom. Tapos magbihis ka ng ganito, magsuot ka ng ganito, umasta ka ng ganito. Okay na. No? Heaven ka na. But the word transformation na pinag-uusapan natin dito is much different. No? Pag umpisin natin ito, it means that it begins at salvation into a total transformation. What do you mean, Pastor? In Romans chapter 12, Apostle explains to us the kind of transformation that we are talking about here. Okay? Notice what Apostle Paul says. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. But let God, and there's that word, transform you into what? A new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good 
and pleasing and perfect. The word transform po is a compound word in the Greek na ang ginamit, metamorpho. Metamorpho. Meta means outside of. Okay? Morpho means to become or to transform. Okay? Ibig sabihin po, yung pagbabagong gustong gawin ng Panginoon ay labas sa iyo kung hindi ito ay para galing sa Kanya. Alright? Religion makes you off, offers to you transformation from without sa labas sa panlabas. Panglabas. Sumunod ka sa ganito, gawin mo lahat to, magdamit ka ng ganito, magbigay ka ng ganito, magganito ka. That's not what we're talking about here. When Jesus says, when Apostle Paul says, transformation, sabi niya, let God, don't just copy. Maraming taong nasa loob ng church at nagsisimba sa simbahan kasi pogi yung pastor. Mamayang gabi. Pakinggan niyo yung preacher natin mamayang gabi. Yan ang ultimate pogi yun. No? Pogi yung pastor. Cute siya. Uh, sikat yung church. Uh, may mga artista. Uh, may aircon. Uh, what, whatever. You know, na-attract ka dahil doon. Yung crush mo nandun. Ganyan. No? So you begin to copy. O kaya, sumasapi ka sa reliyon kasi may napapala ka. For example, pag nag-aral ka dun sa isang sa pinamalaking private university sa buong mundo, ang Brigham Young University, yan po ang, ang universidad, napakamahal dyan, no? ng mga morons. Pag nagpunta ka dyan, libre ang pag-aaral mo kung sasapi ka. Maraming ganyan. Dito may reliyon din ganun dito. Sumapi ka, bibigyan ka ng trabaho. So yung mga iba, kapit to ko, Dahil nakasunod sila doon eh. That's not what Apostle Paul was saying. Apostle Paul was saying, huwag kang manggaya, do not copy the behaviors and practices, customs of the world. But let God transform you. Metamorpho. Ibig sabihin, God will bring transformation into your life. Siya ang magdadala ng pagbabago sa buhay mo. Hindi ba sa sumapi ka sa baptist o sumapi ka sa religion o sa Bible, but God Himself will bring about the transformation in your life. Notice what He says, by changing the way you think. Yung think na pinag-uusapan dyan, changing your soul, changing everything about you, the real you. Now notice in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. Maraming nagkaka-problema tayo kasi hinaharang natin yung change, no? Nakakalimutan natin. Ito sabi, for sa traditional side, for by grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Traditional King James reading yan. In the NLT rendering it says, God saved you by His grace. When you believe, and when you can't take credit for this, it is God's gift, is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast. Di natin pwedeng ipagmayabang. Then, tumitigil ang marami doon. Ngayon ang mali. After natin masave, after natin maligtas, after natin makilala ang Panginoon, tirik na mata natin. Intel na tayo, okay God, sige, bahala ka na. Okay God, you do this. Okay God, you... that's not what I'm talking about here. Now, notice what he says. No, no pagkatapos ng makikialan sa Panginoon, sabi what? For we are. Okay? So, dahil tayo ay ligtas, dahil niligtas tayo ng Panginoon sa ating kasalanan, etong lahat ng ginawa ng Panginoon sa atin, dahil tayo ay isang gawa o masterpiece ng Panginoon. We are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. Para saan? So, we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Many make that mistake sa pagbabasa ng ganun. So, nung panahon ni Jesus, marami rin nagkamali sa time niya kasi they miss the whole concept ng pagiging Kristiyano at yung pagbabagong dala ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. We totally miss that concept. Now, when they miss that concept, hindi na, kaya walang tunay na pagbabago na lumalabas sa puso at sa buhay ng tao. Kaya maraming mga taong dekada na sa simbahan hindi lumalago. 
maraming dekada na sa gawain, pero hindi naman nagkakaroon ng tunay na pagbabago. Because the transformation process is not happening. It's not happening because there's no relationship with Christ. And so therefore, if there's no relationship with Christ, then wala kang maasahang transformation na manggagaling sa Panginoon kasi ang pagbabago comes from Him into us. You see. Now, Jesus explained to us four kinds of ground. Apat na klaseng ground. No pinag-usapan natin sa ground is that this transformation talks about our heart. So, sabi ni Jesus, lahat ng nakikinig sa akin. Okay? May apat na klaseng puso na nakikinig sa akin. Sabi niya, yung una daw is the hard ground. The hard ground is a heart that is not prepared to listen to God. Kasi, bakit, Pastor? Kasi prepared lang siya to listen to himself. Have you ever spoken to a child na nagwawala kasi gusto niya makuha yung gusto niya? Ang hirap kausapin ng batang yun. Bakit? Si utak niya nakapaikot na dun sa gusto niyang bagay. Hard. Very hard. The second is shallow ground. Mababaw. Non-committal. Yung gusto kong maglingkod sa Panginoon, pero, you know, medyo, baka pumalpak si Lord, o hindi ako sure. Shallow ground. The third ground is crowded ground. Pag sinabi natin crowded ground, eto yung ready mag-commit sa Panginoon, pero, hindi rin siya ready bumitaw sa mga bagay na gusto niya. Okay? Yung ready sumunod kay Lord, pero hindi siya ready sumunod, bumitaw dun sa mga ibang sinusunod niya. Okay? Yan. The last one is where we want to be. And that is called fertile ground. Pag sinabi natin fertile ground, ito po ay ang matabang lupa na handa na mag-respond sa Panginoon. Ito ang lupa na handa ng sumunod sa Panginoon. Ito po ang lupa na handa ng makinig sa Panginoon. This is that kind of life. Okay, Pastor, let's talk about that kind of life. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon na ganun ka, paano ba yung transformation process? Okay, James, I want that transformation process. Ano bang kailangan kong gawin? Three things. Three things. There are three things that you can do and you should do in order for the transformation process to begin to happen into your life. Okay? Pag pinag-usapan natin yung proseso ng pagbabago, eto po yun. Okay? Paano gagawin ko doon, Pastor? One, give importance to who you listen to. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. If you have the ability to hear, then you need to listen carefully. Paraphrased po yan. That's not word for word. Yan yung sinasabi sa Matthew 13. Sa the message version, ang sabi, are you listening to this? No? Are you really listening? Di ba sa mga magulang, ganon? No? Anak! Junior! Di ba? Po! Tapos inutos mo, pagbalik, parang hindi siya nakinig. Naisip mo tuloy, nag-usap ba tayo? Right? Right? So when Jesus was saying, look, ang dami nito. You see, what we're saying is, who you have placed to become the final authority in your life. Who have you placed? Sinong nilagay mo sa pinakamalakas na importansya o otoridad sa buhay mo? Sino? Of course, lahat ng tao sinasabi si God. But realistically, truthfully so, sino ba talaga ang inilagay mo as the final authority of your life? Pagka po may nag enroll sa seminary o sa Bible school, I tell them that. Anong pagkakaiba ng taong sumusulod sa tawag ng Panginoon at sa tao na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Anong difference ng tao na nagkukumit sa full-time service at yung young people na naglilingkod sa Panginoon? Hindi nila ka masagot. Ang difference ay ito. Yung young people, yung tao na nagmi-minister sa Panginoon, nagmi-minister siya dahil gusto niya, dahil may crush siya doon, dahil trip niya, dahil nag-i-enjoy siya, dahil ganon. 
Masaya maglingkod sa Panginoon eh. Masaya maglingkod. Diyan may kantang ganon. O, di ba yun? So, naglilingkod siya. Pero yung taong may calling, pag pagod ka na, pag di mo na kaya, pag binabatbata ka na lahat ng tao, pag sinasaksa ka sa likod, lingkod ka pa rin. Bakit? Kasi tinawag ka ng Diyos. Yun ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. You see, that's where the transformation is. It's real transformation recognizes who calls the shots. Ha? Sino ang nasusunod? You see, Real transformation can only happen when we decide to really listen to God. Ha? Maraming mga Kristiyano, sabi nga ni Kyle Aldelman, Eidelman, sa kanyang napakagandang libro, sabi niya, not a fan. Maraming Kristiyano, fans lang sila ng Panginoon. Ha? Fans lang. Kung may NBA ngayon, ang daming bandwagon fans. Depende kung sinong champion. Dati meron kami isinamang pastor sa isang NBA game. Eh, hindi siya marunong ng NBA. Eh, nasa Amerika siya. Sabi nung nagdala sa amin, So, who are you rooting for? Kayo nung kakampi? Sabi niya, the winner. <laughs> ha, ang kampi siya sa panalo. Maraming Kristiyano ganyan. Sabi ni Louis Giglio, The problem with the church today, it is filled with Christians who just date Jesus. Alam niyo, alam niyo sabi ng pastor, yung dinedate si Jesus, di ba pa may date kang babae? Gusto mo siya makilala, gusto mo malaman kung anong klaseng tao siya, no? pero wala kang intention talaga na maging seryoso sa kanya. Maraming Kristiyano, dinedate lang si Jesus. Nag-church ka pag Sunday, may service, pag worship, nag-iimo ka, nagtataas ka ng kamay, no? pag may extra time, extra money, extra effort, magliligo ko sa Panginoon. Pero hindi ka totoong kristyano sa ganong aspeto. Ligtas ka. Pag namatay ka, you, you die, you go to heaven. That's it. That's it. No? Hindi ka seryoso sa pagsunod sa Panginoon. Eh ano, pastor, kung hindi ako seryoso? Hindi ka nilalago. Eh ano, kung hindi ako lumago? O kaya nga, ganyan itsura mo ngayon. Mukha ka tiyadya ka dalawang piso. Hindi ka lang nakakuha ng ayuda, gusto mo na mamatay. Konting bagay lang, bagsa ka na hagad. Konting bagay lang, ano? Fair weather fans. Kaya ang sabi ni Jesus, bigyan mo halaga, give importance to who you listen to. Bakit? Because a prepared heart will always be open to see God's prepared blessings. You see, listening to God prepares your heart. Listening to God prepares the soil of your heart. Pag natuto ka na talagang hanapin ang Diyos, makinig sa Diyos, ihanda mo yung puso mo sa Diyos, then naiyahanda mong tamnan ng Diyos ang puso mo. Bakit pagka-camp, tsaka retreat, unang araw yung tao, makakanta. No? Makakanta. Nakatingin. Yan, yeah, ganyan. Ganun. Pangalawang araw, maganda na. Pangatlong araw, third day of camp, maganda ka na. Fourth day of camp, woo! Woo! Fifth day of camp, woo! Bakit? First day of camp, oo, oh, yun naman mga tao dito. May pataas-taas ng kamay, may paano-ano. Tama? Second day of camp, but ba sila taas ng taas ng kamay? Ano meron siya? Third day of cup, parang feel ko din ah. Amen, amen, amen. No? Fourth day of cup, uy, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Fifth day of cup, magpapastor ako, kahit wala akong alam mag-bridge. Pipridge ako yung mga langgam sa bahay namin. Ba? What happens? Naimo ba? I don't know. But there might be some kind of a transformation. You see, pag natuto ka kasi sa camp, walang signal, walang kahit na mapipilitan ka makinig sa Panginoon. You see, when you give importance to the Word of God, to what God is trying to tell you, then it prepares the soil of your heart. And a prepared heart will always be open to see God's prepared blessings. Hindi ko sinabi 
na everything will happen to you in a blessing. What I'm saying is, kahit yung pinakapangit na situation sa buhay mo will be a blessing to you. And mahanap mo ang blessing ng Panginoon because your heart is prepared. There's a second kind of heart or part of the transformation process. Sabi natin, pagbigyan halaga mo daw, sino ang pinapakinggan mo? Second thing is, give importance to what you will hear. To what you will hear. In Mark chapter 4, verse 24. And he began to say, pay attention to what you will hear. Because with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Even more will be added to you. Now, ano, parang ang word niyang pastora. Parang nahirapan ako intindi kung ano ibig sabihin niyang ang, ang halo-halo na words. Get yan, no? Sa isang classroom may batas. At teka, teka, hindi pala. Hindi pala. Hindi pala yan. Mas malala yung boyfriend noon, yung DJ na isa. Yung mas talaga hindi ko maintindi yung sinabi yung DJ. Siguro masyado na marami siya buyon kaya hindi ko talaga. Hindi ko talaga maintindihan yung place sasabi ng DJ na yun. Okay. Ano ba ibig sabihin yan? Yung pay attention to what you hear. Ayun na nga. Sa isang classroom may batas. Bawal lumabas. <laughs> Pinili talaga eh. Hindi, hindi. Joke lang, joke lang. Napraning ka agad, diba? Ha? Ano ibig sabihin niya, Pastor? Do, do you understand? Now listen to, it, to me. Eh. In every encounter of Jesus, in just about every single encounter of Jesus, He always starts with that first line. Pay attention. No? Pay attention. He always says that. No? To, to those who have ears, let them hear. Always says that. Hindi po yan favorite ano, uh, intro line niya. Okay? That's just how Jesus... Why? Why did He say that? Because... Sinabi ni Jesus yan because in a noisy world, choose to listen to God's word. In a noisy world, you need to choose to listen to God's word. Dapat po tayong matutong makinig sa word of God. In this incredibly noisy world, choose to listen to God's word. Ano sabi ng saita? Not your favorite preacher, not your favorite church, not your favorite televangelist. Use God's word. Pastor, I don't know God's word. James chapter 5 says, if you lack wisdom, ask God and He gives to you. Pastor, ang tagal, don't worry about matagal. God's answer is always in the perfect time. You see, give importance to what you hear, not what you want to hear. Madalas kasi gusto natin, mapakinggan natin yung gusto natin pakinggan. Kaya nag tayo sa church na walang sinabi ko na, I remember nung isang aling ko, merong isang sikat na pastor, gusto ko pa rin siya ngayon, pero meron siyang maling sinabi. Sabi niya ganito sa Twitter, ganito. Sabi niya, You know that stupid thing you did the other day? God is so proud of you for that. Engot ka ba? Hindi ko sasabihin ko anong pangalan mo, J.S. Wala sa Bible yun. In fact, galit ang Panginoon sa stupidity. Sabi niya ano, The fool, the stupid man, shows his folly when he opens his mouth. Ang mamang hangal ay pinakikita ang kanyang kahangalan kapag binuka niya ang kanyang bibig. God isn't proud of us when we're stupid. He loves us but we're not, he's not proud of us. Just as I am when my kids do stupid things. Lalo pag mga lalaki niyo, mga anak niyo lalaki, ayaw ko bang mga lalaki, mga naiisip? Ang mga lalaki can think of a million ways paano nilang saktan ang sarili nila. Gawa ng kababuhan. Sa araw yung apo ko, napakatalino. Honor student. <sighs> Bakit? Nag-dive sa pool. Dove in a swimming pool. Ganito lang kalalim. Katuho the swimming pool. Why would you do that? Ang boys can think of a number of stupid things to do to hurt themselves. You see, ang sinasabi ni Jesus ito, if you want me 
to transform your life. Give importance to what you hear. Give importance to what you hear. Which means what, Pastor? That means to give way to the seed of the Word in your heart. Allow it to do its work. Ano sabi niya? Yung isang seed daw, pumunta sa mababaw na lupa. Pastor, bakit ang Kristiyano mababaw? Eh, kasi hindi ka lumalalim. Masaya ka na doon sa mag-church pag Sunday. Masaya ka na sa pa-amen, amen. You don't get in the Word. You don't let the Word get into you. You don't seek God. You don't seek counsel. You judge right and wrong doon sa gusto mo. You judge right and wrong kung ano yung papabor sa'yo. You judge right and wrong kung ano yung mas maraming kang benefits na makukuha. You know, you, you get more than you give. You ask and you receive more than you give away. Of course, ang babaw mo. Hindi ba ang bata ang babaw din? Karamihan ang mababaw, maramot. Sarili lang iniisip. Exactly. Exactly. You see, give importance to what you hear. Bakit, Pastor? Why do I need to give importance to what, to, to what I hear? That's important. Because when we talk about giving importance to what we hear, what do we mean? Your life is a billboard of the decisions you have made. Ang buhay mo ay isang billboard about the decisions that you have made. Talaga, Pastor? Ulitin natin, ha? O, oh, yan. Yeah, no? Nasa PowerPoint. Kita nyo? Your life is a billboard. Ano yung say, Pastor? You show me the life of a person and I will show you that it is a direct product of the decisions he has made with his life. Hindi mo alam, Pastor. Hindi. May mga taong sumakit sa akin. May mga taong gumawa nila sa akin. Totoo yung meron nun. No? At yung mga taong sumakit sa iyo, mga taong gumawa ng masama sa iyo, dapat silang ilibeng ng buhay sa lugar na maraming langgam at pinahiran sila ng cotton candy. Gets ko yun. I understand. I understand. Okay. But how we are today, our lives today, is a direct reflection of the decisions that we have made. I remember the first time, my doctor, many, many years ago. So I'm about 25 years ago. So I'm 50 years old, so about 25 years ago. About 25 years ago, uh, nagpa-physical ako, tapos sabi ng doktor, Pastor, pastor na po ako nun. Pastor, ang problema po ito, dalawa. Okay, na-hospital ako eh. Una po, ang problema mo, Mataba ka. Gusto ko suntukin. Una sa lahat, pinanganak po ako, 10 pounds. Ulo pa lang yun. Magbabayad ako ng napakalaking pera para sabihin mo sa akin ng isang bagay na matagal ko nang alam. Sa niya, pero pastor, may kinalaman yung iyong physical ano, situation sa mga sakit mo. Okay, paano po yung doc? Mauna, secondly, you are also hypertensive and diabetic and asthmatic and lahat ng tick meron ako eh. One time, may tick din ako sa mukha some years ago. Lahat ng tick. Ang wala lang sa akin yung tick, yung pulgas. Sabi niya, because you inherited it from your, fa- from your mother. In your father's line, not my dad, but kasi my mother, my lola, both sides, yung lola ko at yung lola ko at lolo ko, on my father's side, diabetic, hypertensive, no? Yung lola ko sa father's, sa mother's side, she's also diabetic, hypertensive. Yung lolo ko sa mother's side, may tililing. So, iba usapan na yun. Okay. So, so, and they high blood din siya, high blood. Of course, your mother ko, kidney, ano. So, sabi niya, you inherited all of that. The first thing in my mind was this, eh, kaya naman pala ako ganito, kasi naman ako. Sabi niya, wait, wait, pastor. Sabi niya, please understand na you are the way you are, not because it is in your genes na sa dugo mo, but because, notice what he said, 
because of how you lived your life. And for the next 20-something years, I did not listen to that. And so my life is a billboard of the decisions I have made. The same thing with your spiritual life. Your spiritual life, your emotional life, your relational life, everything about you and me ay isang napakalaking signboard ng mga desisyon na ginawa natin sa buhay natin. And so Jesus says, pay attention kung sinong papakinggan mo, pay attention kung ano ang papakinggan mo, and thirdly and last, sabi niya, if you want to see transformation, pay attention, give importance to how you receive what you hear. Notice what it says. Stop and pay attention. If you have ears, medyo may konting sarcasm yun. Kung may tenga ka, ibig sabihin, pwede kang makinig. Dahil husgahan kita ayun sa napakinggan mo. I will judge you by how many opportunities I've given to you. I will judge you by what I have said. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng isang tao, hindi ko alam. Pagka po naging studyante ko kayo sa college, yan ang bawal sabihin sa klasiko. Yung sir, hindi ko po alam. Bawal yun. Para ka lumundag sa building ng patuwad na walang parachute. Bawal sagutin sa akin na hindi ko alam. Bawal mo isagot sa akin na hindi ako naghanda. Bawal, bawal, bawal. Sa mga mag enroll ngayon semester, kung yan ang favorite mong sagot, yung wala tsaka bawal, don't waste your time and mind. Huwag ka na mag-enroll. Kasi ayaw ko na sagot yun. Bakit? Because pag if you are in my class, I give you every opportunity to learn and every resource you have to be able to learn. Husgahan kita base sa ibinigay ko sa'yo. Same thing with Jesus. By the same measure, it will be measured to you. Kung anong opportunity binigay ko sa'yo, I will measure you by it. Maraming Kristiyano, maraming panalagutan sa langit, kasama na tayo doon. Bakit? Kasi daming pagpapala ng Panginoon, dahil pagkakataon ng Panginoon, itong lahat ng COVID na to, inubos mo, natapos na ng lahat ng queue, ngayon, ESQ na lang yung binabinatan mo, bawal yun, alak yun. Naubos na lahat ng quarantine, ganyan ka pa rin. Hindi ka gumaling, hindi ka natuto, wala ka nagawa, sapilitan pa, nagsayang ka. And God will judge you because transformation is based on His work and your response. What you do with what you hear dictates the growth of what God has put in your heart. Kaya maraming tao hindi lumalago sa Panginoon, hindi lumalago sa emotion, hindi lumalago sa paglingkod, kasi kung paano ka noon, ganun ka pa rin ngayon. Because you chose not to give importance and to follow how you receive what you hear. You see, what standards you allow today will become law in your life tomorrow. Stop, ah. What standards you allow today becomes law in your life tomorrow. I've always said that. I've always believed in the three P's of everything. Ano yung pastor? Actually, two. Huwag muna isa. Practice, performance. How you perform is based on the amount of practice that you put in. Practice produces performance. So pag good practice, good performance. Ha? Huh? Good practice, good performance. Very simple, no? Simple. Same thing with our lives. Yung standards na pinababayaan mo, yung pamantayan na pinababayaan mo sa buhay mo ngayon, magiging batas yun bukas. Okay? Kung dati, hindi ka mahilig maligo nung bata ka, paglaki mo, isa kang malaking bayabas. Okay? Nung bata ka, bantutin ka. Nung tanda ka na, basurahan ka na. Naging batas. Kinikilala. Di ba? Kinikilala. 
Tama? Di ba? Di ba may mga kaibigan tayo dati? You know, kids are cruel. We don't call each other by names. We call each other by monikers. Ano yung monikers? Pinapalayawan natin. No? Sa Bible school lalo, sila Pastor Go, sila Pastor Paul, nako, meron silang dating classmate, ang pangalan si Anthrax. Nagtawa ng lahat na nakakilala. Bakit Anthrax, Pastor? Kasi po, yung paa nun, hindi nagugas ng paa. Ang dami alipungan, baho, kaya amoy anthrax. Yung isa si Kulangot. Alam niyo na kung bakit. Okay? May mga pangalan, may mga pangalan sila. Bakit gagano, Pastor? Kasi, the standard they allowed became law in their life. Okay? Nung, nung bata ko, ang tawag sa akin, alam niyo, nabuli ako nung bata ko eh. Sa ate ko tsaka sa kuya ko. Bunso kasi ako. Pag-pray niyo ako para one day, makarecover ako. I was bullied as a child. What do you mean? By my brother and sister. Ang tawag nila sa akin dati, elepanteng mabango. Kasi, kasi nila ako ng elepante. So, hindi ko lang kung good yun o bad. Pero hindi ako umaasim. So, kahit kasi lahat ng elepante, alam niyo hanggang ngayon, ayaw na ayaw akong bumabantot. Sensitive po ang ilong ko dyan. Okay. Why? The standard before now became a law in my life. Ganun yung spiritual standard. Kung busabos ka sa spiritual life mo noon, pagtanda mo as a Christian, busabos ka pa rin. But if you desire that growth that is allowed by God, then you will be ready to say, God, you wake up every morning saying, God, here's my heart. Lord, matigas ang ulo ko. Lord, I'm hard ground today. Maybe some of you are listening to God today and you understand your hard ground. Maybe an experience has happened. Maybe something has happened. Something was said. Something was done to you. Tumigas yung puso mo. Would you say to God today, Lord, my heart is hard ground today. Or maybe you're shallow today. Masyado ka makasarili. Naisip mo lang sarili mo. Selfish ka. Would you say to God, Lord, I'm selfish today. Lord, I am selfish today. Soften my heart with, with the word. No? Maybe, maybe that's you. Maybe that's you today. Maybe that's you today. Or maybe, you know, your person is crowded. And dahil mo commitment sa lahat ng bagay. Pero kay Lord, di ka maha-commit. Maybe that's you today. Lord, GCQ na. I'm back to work. Dati araw-araw may quiet time ka. Ngayon busy ka ng kumita ng pera. Crowded ground ka na kagad. No? Dati may sweldo ka, pero wala ka mapagkagasusan. So, tawag ka sa church kagad. Ano pong kailangan nyo dyan, church? Baka kailangan nyo assistance. Ngayon, may pagkakataon ka na kumita ng pera, nagbukas ng mega mall. Ngayon, nakalimutan mo na ang church. Nandito pa rin po kami. Crowded ground. Dati, nanonood ka ng TV, YouTube, puro Christian, lahat, lahat, lahat. No? Ngayon, maluwag na. Ngayon, puro tropa. Puro gato, gato, gato. Your heart is crowded. Heart is crowded. You see, transformation begins the moment the soil gives way to the ground. The moment the soil gives way to the ground. Ang tunay na pagbabago ay nangyayari kapag ka ang lupa, ang puso, ay nagbigay daan. Gives way. To the ground. What do you mean, Pastor? What are we talking about when we're, when we're talking about transformation? I have here a bottle of water. Now, <clears throat> sabi nila, a man can live 40 days without food, but not 7 days without water. Totoo po yun. That's, that's true. You know, I'm a... a Proponent of fasting, hindi yun praying fasting. Fasting lang. And if I do fast and pray, you won't know it. Kasi sabi sa Bible, huwag mo yung pagsabi. Water. 40 days, pwede kang mabuhay without food. The longest fasting, food fasting, food fasting ay hindi kumain. That I know of 
in the intermittent fasting society lasted 378 days. Whoa! Isang taon siyang hindi kumain ng pagkain. Liquid lang. Tubig lang. You imagine that? The buhay. He lost parang 300 pounds ata. Because water is a, a compound material. Uh, water is composed of, ang uh, elements niyan ay H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. When you combine hydrogen and oxygen, you have water. Now, water is important to us. It replenishes our thirst. It helps us hydrate. It makes our organs function. Function, function much better. That's what water does. But let me give you a clue. Water alone, during times of very, very hard workouts, very, very hard labor, is not enough. Hindi po sapat ang tubig. Because when you work, when you have sweat, pag pinawisan ka, when you work hard, you lose minerals in your body na hindi nare-replenish ng water. So as awesome as water is, it's actually not enough. In my hand, it's what I call, um, this is called Himalayan pink salt. It's uh, supposed to be the purest form of salt. Itong Himalayan pink salt. Sabi nila, if you take water like this, and you take the Himalayan pink salt, na pure salt, no, wala yan, hindi yan iodized pure. Galing po sa bato talaga to eh. You take this, and kumuha ka ng mga one or two pinches ng Himalayan pink salt and you infuse, ilagay mo sa isang litrong tubig and you shake it, dissolve na po ang salt. This good but highly lacking kulang na, mineral, na water has now become a powerful energy drink. Because Himalayan pink salt, pag sinama sa water, adds somewhere between 17 to 35 trace minerals na dating na wala sa iyo pag pinawisan ka and it restores your body. It keeps you hydrated longer, hindi ka madidehydrate, it helps you with your muscles so that you won't cramp. It restores functionality to your organs. It also stabilizes your dropping blood sugar. So kung diabetic ka, importante yun. All because you can hardly taste it. Parang Gatorade lang yan, walang flavor. Kaya huwag kayong bumibili ng maganda. Naliloloko lang kayo, inasinan lang yun. Something so simple, something important, has become something powerful. It has transformed. Metamorpho. Transformation outside, bringing it in, and you have no longer water, but infused water. Pastor, why do I need infused life? Because you are daily, either daily growing into God's design for you, or you are daily wasting it away. You are either daily growing into God's design for your life, or you're daily wasting it away. Because a true God encounter produces change. A true God encounter produces 
change, a true God encounter will produce change. How important is transformation, Pastor? Your life depends on it. Your family depends on it. Your future depends on it. Most of all, yung lakad mo kasama ang Panginoon depends on that transformation today. Would you let God do that for today? What is your heart like? Is it hard? Is it shallow? Is it crowded? Is it fertile? Let God transform it today, okay? Dear Father, we come before you today. As I pray, Lord, there are people here, Panginoon, na ang puso nila, Lord, matigas, for whatever reason, Panginoon, mga pangyayari sa buhay, ano man. There are people here, Lord, their, their life, their hearts, Lord, are hard. And then there are those, Lord, whose hearts, Lord, are shallow. Mababaw, Panginoon. Mababaw ang commitment, mababaw ang pagsunod sa iyo, mababaw, Panginoon. Then there are those whose hearts are crowded. Daming umaagaw ng attention, Lord, that comes from you. Lord, I pray that you would do whatever it takes for them, for their hearts to become fertile ground for you. And maybe you're listening today, and as you listen to what I'm saying, you're saying, Pastor, I want my heart to be soft and fertile for God. Would you pray this prayer? Would you say, Lord Jesus, Lord, I need you to change my heart. Baguhin mo po ako, Panginoon. Change my life. Baguhin mo. Lord, I don't want a religion. I want to know you. Gusto kitang makilala, Panginoon, bilang isang tunay na tagapagligtas. At gusto kong baguhin mo ang puso at buhay ko today. My friend, a simple prayer like that may seem so simple, but it's powerful. Just like that salt, simpling bagay. It creates change in your life. Or maybe your heart is shallow today. For whatever reason, yung mga events sa society natin, yung lalim mo sa Panginoon two weeks ago or a week ago, ngayon mababaw na ulit. Would you say to God, Lord, let me come deep to you today. Maybe you're here and your heart is crowded. Ang daming umaagaw sa attention ng puso mo. Would you say, Lord Jesus, please, clear out my heart. I just want to follow. Lord, make me fertile ground before you. Would you let God do that today? Father, I pray for all these people listening today. Regardless of who we are, where we are in our life, help us to become fertile ground for you. Because every God encounter requires change. So please, God, I pray that you would do that today. And Lord, we will praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Ito po si Pastor James Lee Tika, International Bible Church. And I want to thank you for joining us this morning. We have a lot of content throughout the day. Uh, we hope you didn't miss yung ano, yung ating uh, uh, kids uh, pro portion yesterday had so much fun doing that tuloy-tuloy po yan kahit na mauna itong GCQ natin or whatever we'll continue to keep doing many of our uh, ministries that we do online we pray will be a blessing to you and if there's anything we could do to pray with you and pray for you please comment down in the comment section um, follow us and subscribe to YouTube like our page on Facebook most of all let God and His Word get into you Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. We have an announcement that comes after this. Please listen, okay? Good morning po. Amen. Alam kong tayo po ay pinagpala lahat kanina sa mensahe na pinabot po sa atin ng ating pastor. And wag lang sana natin paringgan, kundi i-share din natin sa inyong mga Facebook account. I-share, i-like, lalo na sa mga hindi pa natin, na, mga mahal natin sa buhay na hindi pa nakakapakinig ng Ibanghelyo. I-tag nyo po sa kanila. Importante po yung announcement natin patungkol sa mga nangyayari itong mga nakarang linggo dito sa ating lugar, dito sa Magdaluyong. Halos dalawang beses nagkaroon ng sunog. Una dito sa may bandang Martinez. Pangalawa, part pa rin ng barangay Addition Hills. Dito naman banda sa may 9 de Febrero. 
eh, may mga ilan tayong mga former students na naapektuhan ng sunog. Isama po natin sila sa panalangin, lalo na yung mga uh, talagang nat natamaan na hindi lang yung bahay kundi may mga buhay pa na nakitil doon sa lugar na yon. So ipagpray po natin yung ating uh, city dito sa Mandaluyong, ang barangay doon na uh, naka-assign doon sa area ng Addition Hills and of course sa mga members lalo na sa mga members natin and mga estudyante na nandoon. Uh, nung nakarang araw nagkaroon din tayo ng effort para magbigay tayo ng ilang uh, relief uh, donation doon sa mga estudyante natin sa crossover and center kids natin. So kung kayo po ay nais na gustong maging kabahagi ng ating pagtulong sa kanila, pagbigay alam nyo lang po sa amin, pwede kayong tumawag sa ating opisina or uh, kontakin nyo kami through Facebook para malaman natin kung paano kayo maaring makatulong. And importante po, again, on July 20, kasi 15, MGCQ na, so yung darating na linggo na yon, antayin natin kung ito po ay... Uh, Maluwag na para sa atin na makapag-regular service. At kung mangyari man yun, siyempre, lilimitahan pa rin natin yung dami ng tao dito sa loob ng ating kapilya. So, mangyayari po ay magkakaroon tayo ng multiple services. So, bibigi, magbibigay kami ng anunsyo patungkol po dito. At kung ang ating pong statistics, eh, mas marami pa rin po talagang uh, cases, then stay ano lang po tayo, stay tuned lang po tayo dito sa online service. And continue pa rin itong online service natin kahit na may regular service na po tayo. So patuloy pong paalala, magpalanginan tayo sa isa't isa, magpalakasan po tayo, gamitin po natin pagkakataong ito yung mga uh, ministry natin sa online na i-share natin, panoorin natin, suportahan natin, at ganun din ay uh, bigyan niyo po kami ng idea kung paano namin kayo mamiminister. Kung kayo po'y kailangan ng counseling, kayo po'y kailangan ng prayer request, sabihin nyo lang po sa amin at pwede natin yan ilagay sa ating midweek service, sa ating prayer meeting. So yun lang po, importante po yung mga announcement na yun. Maraming maraming salamat po. Kita-kita po tayo mamayang gabi. May service po po tayo. God bless po. Na kayo po'y na-bless at napagpala ng ating uh, service ngayong umaga. Huwag po kayong uh, mag-atubili na mag Uh, mag-message kung kailangan nyo ng counseling or prayer request. Kasi tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung ating online streaming. Yung Wednesday natin, huwag nyo makakalimutan, prayer meeting natin, Koinonia. And then yung sa youth natin every Friday, every Saturday, sa kids, yung Kids Revolution, and of course, Sunday services po natin. Waiting po natin, last song. Ready na po kayo? Ready, come on. You are the everlasting God. Everlasting God, as you do not fail, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, and you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. God bless po. See you tonight.